So I have this HP 53310A modulation domain analyzer, which is a really makes a really cool frequency counter, a graphical frequency counter, and also the resolution is insane. Um, I mean, 15 digits worth of resolution on this thing. And um, we're gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna play with, I'll show you what I'm doing, show you how I have it set up. Let's stop this for now. Um, and what a modulation domain analyzer really does is, it, is it's, it's meant to measure modulation of a frequency in a time domain. So you can really zoom in and analyze how the frequency changes over time. In this case, I'm doing a bow plot and, uh, or histogram. Uh, we're gonna create a bow plot from a histogram and um, some of the basic settings here. So under display, I have it set for histogram. Do some basic framing, uh, linear, uh, axis mode, um, y-axis uh, scale be auto, uh, auto, which is vertical. Um, and under the ver uh, so sampling is very important. I have it set for 500 milliseconds per sample. Uh, manually set that, and sampling we set to auto. Um, in the vertical I have set to center of 10 megahertz exactly, a span of uh, 10 millihertz. And I'll show you why I'm doing all this here in a second. Histogram. We're going to set this for. 10 measurements uh, and with the accumulation turned on. And um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be comparing the reference output between these two GPS discipline oscillators. This oscillator, this GPS DO, is BG7TBL um, GPS DO. I highly modified this guy. So when I changed out the, the reference oscillator that came in it, the, the uh, oven controlled uh, crystal oscillator, and I installed an Oscilocorp 8663, uh, which kind of looks like these. Those are the U UTC uh, version of the, uh, it's a double oven, very stable, very uh, good um, crystal oven. So I changed that out. And I also changed out the chip. The supply chip was an M7, a U-Box M7. I changed out for a U, I'm sorry, an M8T, the timing module. Um, and it's a much better chip. Um, and this is set up currently for just for Galileo. So I have it set for Galileo, which is the ESA constellation. And this over here is the ZYT GPSDO, which has a trimble guts inside there. And it's all stock trimble. And uh, we're going to compare this guy versus this guy. So how we're doing this, the output, the 10 maker output of this runs into the distribution amp distribution amp into the rear or the reference input. You can see down here where it says external reference external. That's the Galileo reference from my GP, uh, BG7 TBL GPSDO. And then the output from the Trimble for GPS is gonna go into input A. So we're gonna do a little time-lapse video. Let me put you on here. There we go, and go to zoom. And uh, here we go, two times zoom. Let me square this up a little bit. You hear in a second, we're gonna, we're going to um, do a time-lapse video, but I'll show you basically what it looks like here if I hit run. And it's going to take 10 samples and it's gonna display it on here. We're gonna add some measurements on here. We're gonna do, um, let's do a peak to peak Let's do, um, do, 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 do standard deviation. And the last one, mean of averaging. So uh, the peak to peak and standard deviation, peak to peak down here, 1.359 millihertz and standard deviation, 391.5 microhertz is of the uh, grouping of the number of samples, number of measurements that it's, it's calculating that from. However, the mean frequency is a continuous update of all accumulated samples. So this frequency here is an average of everything it's, it's sampled. Now, if we go back over on vertical, see our markers. So over here, we can set up our tracking. So we're tracking on and we're tracking compared F2, which we don't want 9.9999. Uh, we want that 10 megahertz. So let's enter that 10 megahertz. Uh, right there. So now it's going to show us a delta 
and the delta right now is 433 microhertz. So the input signal average so far is 465 microhertz above my reference of F2 of 10 megahertz exactly. And it's going to show the lines here. This dotted line is the reference F2. The, the dashed line is the mean uh, frequency down here. I said that right or did I say that backwards? Actually, I said that completely backwards. The dotted line is my reference. The mean is the dashes. Sorry about that. Don't use this all that often, so it takes a little bit to figure it out every time I use it. Anyways, I'm going to clear the display, stop this. I'm going to put this into uh, my, my camera here into a... Um, I think I, I told it to stop. Let me see here, stop to clear. Okay, I'm gonna put it into a um, time lapse. We're gonna watch it accumulate for a little bit. And this way we can compare the two reference outputs from the two different GPS DOs with the two different constellations and see how they compare. All right, so the results. So we have 2,909, oh, sorry, 2.99 thousand samples. And the end result is we have, let me see here, Claire, you're not helping here. Let me, give me a second. So we have, let's see if I can read this all out. Uh, nine point, you're not helping, Claire. Um, let's see if I can read this out. 9.999999. 9999994943. So effectively, that means from 10 megahertz right here, we're 50.6 microhertz averaged um, a little bit. This, this input, which is my ZYT, is 50 microhertz higher than the reference, which is being fed to it, which is the uh, BG7 TVL on Galileo. 50 microhertz. That's pretty impressive. I mean, the fact that you can even measure down to this resolution is just astonishing to me. Um, and uh, so this is going to be my new toy to play with. I got, I got quite a few toys over here to play with, but this is my toy to play with for right now. Because this, this unit is, I mean, you can do so much with it. It's so underrated. Um, and what you can do with this guy. So um, uh, I'm sure I'm using it for all the wrong reasons, all the things they didn't intend for you to use it for, but um, I'm having fun with it. Anyways, that's a toy for now. Just a little show and tell, and uh, it's nice to see that it appears that both Galileo and GPS agree. I don't need to call the Na National Observatory, the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. and tell them to update the frequency. Uh, appears to be correct. And uh, on that note, catch you later.